Hey, what's going on guys? This is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. I apparently have made my most controversial video in a long time, and that is this. Paladins has a huge TTK or time to kill problem right now, where I uh, remarked about how I think that the time to kill is simply too high in this game at the moment, and I think there are some major issues that need to be addressed. Most importantly, I think that the increased EHP items, you know, the damage reduction health items, are too strong, and I think some healers could be toned back a little bit. And this was... <laughs> it, it stirred up a lot of discourse, let's just put it that way. I have over, well, exactly 200 comments on this video, so hundreds of comments. Most of them dissenting with me, in part or in whole. And I also have a fair few amount of dislikes on this video. This had one of the worst like-to-dislike ratios I've had in a very long time. And so I made a poll on my community tab, asking people what they think about the time to kill. Is the time to kill in Paladins too high, too low, or just right? And a staggering 72% of people think that the time to kill in this game is just right right now, which I found to be very fascinating, because, as you guys know, I am a very long-time player, and I have seen the time to kill drastically climb over the past few years, specifically in the past year with the changes to the item store, and also when you consider the fact that literally every single support got buffed in either a major or minor way in 2023. And so, to me, it feels like the game is getting just a little bit too slow in regards to the time to kill if you're going to abuse these items and stuff. So I wanted to make a video talking about that, and it turns out I'm in the minority when it comes to my opinion. So today, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the topic of the time to kill in Paladins, and I wanted to explain more about why I think the way I do, and address some of the criticisms, some of which I actually do find myself agreeing with. And also, I want to talk about how, even if you think that the time to kill in Paladins is just right right now, I think it could be implemented in a far more reasonable, fair, and fun way. So let's dive in. So first of all, let's talk about the criticisms. Many people commented how they preferred Paladin's time to kill over Overwatch's because it's slower. And in Overwatch, you tend to get one shot or two shot a lot of the time. I think now it's trended away from one shots because people in that game didn't even like it. But still, Overwatch does have a much faster time to kill than Paladin's, and that's true. Some people also said that we really don't want to go back to the burst meta. The burst meta! Which, as I'm sure you guys remember, uh, if you've been around this game long enough, was a time in Paladins where the game also had a very fast time to kill, comparable to Overwatch. For example, with Kinesa, you could one-shot people, you would also charge your sniper faster. And that was just with a talent called Eagle Eye, you would do 2400 damage headshots. And that's just one example. Characters did more damage, like Bomb King did 900 damage per bomb, and you would really just see people getting bursted a lot quicker. Not to mention Leon at the time, who, gosh. So... I am not asking for a return to the burst meta. The burst meta is simply too quick for a game like Paladins, which is meant to be a hero shooter, but also more like a MOBA shooter compared to, I guess, similar tactical shooters like maybe Valorant or CSGO. So, yeah, I'm with you. I don't want to return to the burst meta. That's not what I was asking for at all. And also, I agree that I wouldn't want this game to have Overwatch's time to kill either. Because, again... It has far more MOBA aspects. You have an item shop, you have loadouts, you have all these things that make the game want to be played at a more slow pace. Rampage. That's never been my concern. My problem is specifically that I think the time to kill is too high right now. There is a sweet spot, I feel, which is much slower than Overwatch, certainly, but not as slow as we are right now. And my main issue is, again, with these items. Specifically armor plating and the damage reduction as a whole, but also the fact that you can stack this with veteran and you can turn any average damage character into a tank. I mean, I think it's a really concerning thing when an average damage champion needs a whole clip from Cassie to be killed. Six shots is what you need to kill Shaolin, and all he has to do is run the health card at level 5 and buy armor plating and veteran, which is eminently reasonable in any match, and it turns him into a tank, and that's, you know, that's only if he doesn't get healed, if you're lucky enough to be able to kill him in six shots with Cassie, otherwise if he gets healed, you're gonna need more than one clip with Cassie just to take out this character. A lot of people also pointed out that, well, you're not battling people in isolation. It's not always a 1v1. You're not just taking shots from one Cassie. You're getting shot from multiple sources. And okay, that is true. You're right. My shooting range example isn't exactly accurate to the real game. The point of the shooting range example is just to demonstrate, though, the fact that you are able to take a ludicrous amount of damage with a character that's otherwise meant to be honestly more of a glass cannon. I mean, Shaolin's all about the burst, right? 
He's not supposed to be the tankiest character, but yet, I mean, we have 2,800 HP and we have 21% DR. Like, <laughs> and of course, having a slow time to kill like this will end up enabling some team-based strats, right? It helps play into the MOBA-style aspect of the game. That is true, as many people have pointed out. But I think when the TTK that gets this high, when you're able to tank that much damage as a damage character, you end up kind of bringing it back around to hurting the MOBA aspect. Because imagine, let's say you get hooked with Shaolin into a Furia Beam, and you have this much HP, and let's say you also have Unbound, right? And let's say maybe you're replating a Veteran at level 2 instead of level 3 because you bought Unbound. You'll be able to just get unstunned by the Furia Beam, and then walk away, and you'll probably end up living because you're just that tanky, and they're not going to be able to do enough damage to take you out. And so that cool combo, that coordination that you've just had, is pretty much ruined and is not satisfying, you know? But alright, let's say that you still think the time to kill is absolutely just fine in this game. You like the pacing of the game. I'm just an old man who yearns for a simpler time when characters would die just a little bit quicker. Well, I would still make the argument that the time to kill right now could be implemented in a far much healthier way for the game that would result in a lot more fun. And that is because of damage reduction in particular. I have beef with this item, and, I mean, uh, nobody buys Arcane Warding, but theoretically, I have beef with this one too. And that's because damage reduction plays with the game systems in a way that slows down the game too much and also makes it much less fun to play. But also, armor plating is ubiquitous. You see pretty much all five characters buying this item in pretty much every match right now, and that's not good for the diversity of the item store, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So damage reduction is detrimental to the enjoyment of the game for a few different reasons. But first and foremost is that it slows the pacing of the game, and particularly, it slows the pacing of the cool stuff you can do in Paladins, because damage reduction inhibits the amount of ultimate charge and credit gain you get from dealing damage, because you're doing less damage. For a practical example, if we shoot Ying with Shaolin here, we gain 6% ultimate charge every single time we hit a fully charged shot. Just as intended, right? If but if we do less damage like we did there, you see we get less ultimate charge. And if I just half charge a shot, you see that we gain about 3%, 4%, 2%. So we gain less ultimate charge for doing less damage. And when the enemies all have this level of damage reduction, it slows the amount of ultimates that you're able to gain. And... If you want to play into the MOBA-style aspect of Paladins, where you're able to have these cool abilities and use them in tandem with each other and all this cool stuff, right? Then wouldn't you want to have more ultimates? Not to mention, ultimates are just fun. So I feel like this really hurts that aspect of the game. But also, you gain credits for dealing damage. Just like that, we gain 40 credits for dealing damage to Fernando. Every 6,000 damage you do, uh, you deal, you get more credits, right? So by doing less damage, because the enemies have damage reduction, it also hurts the item economy, and that means you're able to buy fewer items in the game. And this is a compounding issue, because you're already spending a bunch of credits on armor plating, but then once everyone has armor plating, you've already made such a huge investment into this, but then you have fewer credits to invest in other items. And so, it hurts the item economy of the game, and it hurts the ultimate economy of the game, in a very similar way to when Guardian was buffed on the PTS to 60%. All of a sudden... You would just run double shield, triple shield comps, and you would completely inhibit the enemy's ability to get ultimate charge and get credits. It's not exactly the same because you can still get some ultimate charge and credits from shooting enemies, but the fact of the matter is, it still slows down the game. And another aspect when it comes to damage reduction is simply the enjoyment of seeing big numbers on the screen. I know, it might seem like a silly argument, but it is true that when you deal a big wallop of damage like that, it's satisfying. I mean, that's the whole reason why games like Warframe are popular, you just see big numbers on the screen. It's why Maelstrom Grok is fun, and, uh, well, Grok in general, the totems have like a bajillion numbers right now. And that's all really well and good. And when you buy damage reduction, you feel less of that impact, and it's just not as satisfying. It's not fun to play, like, Shaolin and do, like, 700 damage per arrow and feel like that impact is just gone. And I want to paint you a hypothetical picture right now. Let's say we have two characters that have identical amounts of effective hit points. One of them has 3,000 health. Just raw hit points, no damage reduction. The other one has 1,500 hit points and then 50% damage reduction, so you're doing half the amount of damage to them. 
both characters would die in the exact same amount of time. But one of them would be significantly more fun to kill, wouldn't it? The one with 3,000 raw hit points would make you feel like your damage is impactful, like you're doing something meaningful. It would feel satisfying. The one with 50% damage reduction would just feel like a slog to get through. And the one with 50% damage reduction, yeah, would also be hurting your ultimate gain, your credit gain, because you're doing less damage, even though you're killing them in the same amount of time. Yet another reason why damage reduction is so problematic is because damage reduction is actually rejuvenated in disguise. At least, a little bit. So, because you take less damage when you buy armor plating, you need less health to be healed back, right? Let's say I mitigate Shaolin's 1000 damage arrow to just 700. That's 300 fewer hit points that I need to be healed back, so it makes it a lot easier for my healers to heal me. And if you stack damage reduction with rejuvenate, you, you get to see the problem where, okay, you're receiving 30% more healing, you're turning late game cauterize into just 60% cauterize, and you're taking less damage now. By golly, it is ridiculously easy to heal me now. And pretty much any character in the game can do that right now. And if you were to just buy veteran instead, no damage reduction, you wouldn't have this problem because you'd still be taking the same amount of damage. If you bought Veteran and Rejuve, well, yeah, you'd be getting increased healing, but yeah, that character would be a lot harder to heal than someone who has a bunch of damage reduction. And so part of the reason why healers feel so strong is because damage reduction is so strong. And yeah, it just it leads to a compounding issue where, okay, supports are really good right now in terms of the amount of healing that they can do. Rejuvenate is really good, although it did get nerfed in its credits, you know, uh, in the amount of credits you have to spend for it. I don't think Rejuvenate is a problem right now. But then also, characters can just stack these items. They can stack armor plating. Everyone's buying armor plating. And when you have all these inter interconnected systems uh, stacking together, everyone turns into a tank. So if you wanted to have a similar time to kill to what we have now, but you wanted to make it more fun and more fair for everybody involved, you would have to deal with with damage reduction, because damage reduction, I think, is the crux of a lot of the TTK issues that we are facing right now. And if you wanted to have a higher TTK still in this game, but without the damage reduction, then you would have to play more into the idea of characters having more health instead. And there's actually precedent for this from back in the day. You see, back in the open beta days, when the TTK was admittedly, yes, a lot higher, characters also had more health to compensate. Characters like Bomb King and Pip had like 2,500 hit points, if I recall from my experiences on the uh, OB44 project that uh, people have been working on recently. And uh, characters like Grover were able to exceed 3,000 health. So characters back in the day had a lot more health, but also there was much less of a reliance on damage reduction. And that's because the item store was a bit different at the time, right? You had Haven and Blast Shields instead of Armor Plating and Arcane Warding. And both of those items were more expensive than the current damage reductions. Uh, damage reduction items. They scaled worse than the current damage reduction items. And also, well, sadly the item store wasn't perfect at the time either because most characters had to buy Cauterize. So Cauterize, being the prevalent number one item that you had to buy, mitigated the amount of credits that you could spend on this damage reduction instead. And so you weren't able to as readily access these damage reduction items. And also Veteran didn't exist. So, in general, Characters were a lot more focused on just having a lot of health and bursting the enemies down, right? And again, I'm not asking for a return to the burst meta. I, I think I've made that clear very clear by now. But if you wanted to help make Paladin's time to kill relatively be the same as it is now, but make it more fun for everyone involved, we need to create less of a dependence on these damage reduction items. Either rework them, or just make them not nearly as good as they are right now. And then what you could do is you could possibly buff some characters' health pools to compensate. And make it so that, okay, maybe a character like Shaolin can reach 3,000 hit points if you max out Veteran and you have the health card. Maybe that's the thing you have to do. But that character, I would much rather fight than the current Shaolin, who was able to get 2,800 effective hit points, or uh, 2,800 hit points, and then have... Armor Plating 3 for a further 21% damage reduction on top of that. One of those characters is significantly more fun to fight, even if they take about the same amount of time to kill. That's a world I would like to see for Paladins, rather than the current mess where Armor Plating is literally the most popular item in the game right now. The very last issue with this item that I want to talk about is that, well, like I just mentioned, it's the most popular item in the item store. And at the very least, if you agree that the time to kill is... Yeah, fine, right now. 
you still should have a problem with this item because you're not able to buy these other cool items instead. If you invest in armor plating, that's an item slot, and that's a bunch of credits taken away from any of the much more fun items that you could be buying. Nimble, life rip, meditation, trigger sense, uh, morale boost, right? All of these items are, I would argue, way more fun for ar than armor plating, and they also create more build diversity as a result. Armor plating is just, it's more health. And if everyone's investing in this all the time, then these other 19 items just kind of go to waste. I mean, obviously you still buy Unbound, you still buy Veteran Rejuvenate, right? But it, it's creating a dynamic where this item store, I don't think, is able to shine as much as it really should, because this is just so gosh darn meta. Now, one last thing I want to address is what I said about healers, because more people tended to disagree with what I said about healers than what I said about the items. And I still stand by a lot of what I said uh, in terms of the idea of making supports more like actual supports with uh, more of an emphasis on unique identities and utility rather than just being heal bots. But I do want to clarify a few things. First of all, some supports should be heal bots for the people who like heal bots. Uh, apparently, there are a lot of people who do just enjoy sitting there. Hold and right click. No, it's not for me, I, I fully admit. But, yeah, I am not necessarily opposed to heal bots existing, right? Ying is a heal bot. And that's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what she does. But my problem, and my problem for a while, has been that most supports are becoming heal bots and losing their identities. For example, Io used to have the ability to capture the objective with Luna. Genos used to have utility on his... Uh, astral marks they weren't just about healing they also provided damage amps and yeah honestly i yeah those were pretty busted at the time but they provided more unique reasons to play these characters and when you have supports that do unique things you create more team comp variety and you create a less stale meta than simply who can heal the most which that's been the meta for a long time is simply who can heal the most right ying has been meta for a good minute now io has been pretty good ever since she got her buffs, right? Grover has been at the top of the meta because he's able to do a bunch of healing and a bunch of damage and not poke people, right? While also having really good survivability. Lilith has been pretty good if you know how to play her. Furia, uh, I mean, she's been changed like 15 billion times, but nowadays Solar Blessing is the meta for her because it's able to be a, a super powerful healing tool. Go watch my last video if you want to see <laughs> how good that is. But before that, when Cherish was able to heal up to like 3k bursts on tanks, Guess what? That was the meta. And I think that if we had more supports that leaned more into giving different buffs, giving different debuffs, stuff like that, that you would have a more interesting support class. But that doesn't mean necessarily that we remove heal bots entirely from the game. Some characters can still be heal bots. And also that doesn't mean we nerf every other character's healing into the ground. That's not what I'm saying either. I don't want Grover to heal for like 300 per blossom or something silly like that, which... That's a straw man of my own position. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody thinks I'm calling for that. But I wanted to clarify that, and I am sticking to my guns on that. Because, I mean, it's been my position for a while now. I'm surprised this video had so much uproar about that in particular, because I've been saying this about supports for a long, long time now. That their healing has been uh, power crept pretty severely, and I wish that they would have more utility and more unique identities. I know Ray is a very controversial character. But she is a character that does a unique identity store. right. Both in terms of how much build diversity she has, because she has a lot of really interesting cards and a lot of really interesting playstyles that emerge, but also because she is pretty much the only support in the game right now with a strong, unique identity where she's not necessarily meta all the time, but she works really well with certain team comps because she buffs ultimate charge, right? Okay. She's able to power up characters who have good ultimates like Fernando, Khan, Furia, Grok, etc., and she also has powerful damage reduction, but only against certain characters. So she's situational, but she's really, really powerful in those situations. And she's not a heal bot. She's the furthest thing from a heal bot. She's all about buffing and debuffing and managing Link. And that's really, really cool. Yeah, I know she's annoying to play against sometimes when it comes to the invalid, when it comes to her ultimate. When it comes to the spirit Link giving free damage and slows and stuff like that. But... She's kind of like one of the only supports left who has an identity that's not just how much healing can I do. And I want to see more like that. Not necessarily as annoying 
as what Ray can do sometimes. Admittedly, I, I get it. I get that she's annoying. But can you imagine if we had a bunch of other supports that were able to have specific things where, oh, they're situational, but they're really powerful in the right situation. I think that would be cool. And that's really all I want. So in summary, I hear your criticisms. And I understand. A lot of people do prefer the time to kill, and I am in the minority when I say that I would prefer things to be just a little bit faster. But I think that we can still come together and agree that there are some issues in the game right now when it comes to how the time to kill is managed. I think that armor plating plays a big role in the frustrations perceived right now when it comes to the time to kill in this game. And if that were able to be fixed in some way by mitigating how much people rely on that, I think we'd have a much more diverse item store. And I think you'd also have a lot more fun because, yeah, you could make the time to kill pretty long, right? You could still make it as slow as it is right now, but you'd still be able to feel more impact than if everyone is just taking so little damage, right? So that's, I think, the big thing. I think that's the source of a lot of frustration, and that's probably where a lot of attention needs to be focused. And I hope a lot of people can agree with that. But, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> and in terms of supports, I, I'm sorry, but I have to stick my, my guns on that one. I think that more utility for supports, more uh, diversity in terms of our support roster, in terms of what supports can do, would be great because it would shake up the meta. It would make the meta not just who can heal the most, but it would create a situation where you'd have supports that are more diverse. You'd have situations where one support is good, but one support is bad. You'd have comp-specific supports, and I think that would create a, a more rich environment, and it would play into the exact sort of MOBA-esque uh, style of Paladins that people like the game having a high, a high time to kill for in the first place. So, yeah, I, I have to stick to my guns on supports, but I do understand why people like the current time to kill. I'm not calling for a return to the burst meta. I'm not calling for this game to be like Overwatch. I just think that we have a sweet spot, and we're a little bit higher than the sweet spot at the moment. That's all I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, please let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section down below. Am I still off base? because <laughs> I got 200 comments last video saying that I'm off base, please let me know. Uh, and make sure to like if you like, uh, dislike if you disliked, and subscribe, and do all the wonderful YouTube stuff. Check out the links in the description if you want to support me, and yeah, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Okay.